Voyager, the most ambitious space mission in history. The Voyager missions have ventured far beyond where other probes have explored. They are the most distant emissary representatives of the human species. Exploring further than any human-made spacecraft has gone before. August 20th, 1977. Two, one. We have ignition and we have liftoff. The mission begins when Voyager 2 blasts off. Followed two weeks later by its twin, Voyager 1, which will take a shorter and faster route. Their destination, Jupiter, and then Saturn. When the time comes, that that mission is actually ready to go to the launch pad. It's a funny mixture of joy and bittersweet loss. They become like your children. And that launch is like the birth of a baby. I was standing there watching it climb up into the sky and we were cheering, we were so happy. Voyager was on its way. September, 1977. Before heading out to the planets, Voyager 1 captures an image to see if everything is working. That was the first time you could actually see our home and the moon together in the same frame. It was fantastic. What a great first picture for Voyager. But Voyager 1 doesn't stick around. It's on a tight schedule. Though funded to just explore the two gas giants, mission planners have a much bigger journey in mind to send the Voyager spacecraft on a grand tour of the solar system to the outermost planets, Uranus and Neptune, worlds that have never been explored. Both Voyagers reveal an unbelievably dynamic world. Scientists were able to take a sequence of images of Jupiter that they could put together like a flip book to get a sense of motion. And it was just astounding. Now we can see things moving within the atmosphere of Jupiter in a way that we had no sense of before. Together, the spacecraft take over 33,000 images of the gas giant. These pictures reshape our understanding of Jupiter, especially its largest moons. Of all the moons around Jupiter, and there are a lot, Io was the one that shocked everybody. We got back this very unusual picture. We saw this bright feature on the dark limb of Io. And we wondered, what could it be? At first, they thought that arc might be another moon behind Io, but the, the geometry was wrong. There were no moons there. Well, they figured out that these were volcanic plumes. This is the first time we'd ever seen another volcanically active world anywhere in the solar system, right? It really transformed our ideas, our concept of what a moon could be. At Jupiter, the Voyagers discover three new moons and a ring system invisible from Earth. Not to be outdone, the planet itself has a few surprises. The probes turn to the gas giant's most famous feature, the Great Red Spot. Jupiter's red spot is a feature that has existed in its atmosphere since we began looking at Jupiter. It's incredible. What it turns out to be is a storm that has lasted centuries. The Voyagers reveal a maelstrom of gas, swirling counterclockwise between two bands of high-speed winds. The red spot has been kept in a single place because it's sort of sandwiched between these two bands of atmosphere like a whirlpool and eddy and two currents that are moving next to each other. That may have helped promote its stability over all these centuries. 1980, right on schedule, Voyager 1 arrives at the ringed planet. Its sensors probe Saturn's atmosphere and discover it's mainly hydrogen and helium. 
Saturn has nearly a hundred times the mass of the Earth, but it has so much more volume that when you look at its density, it's actually less dense than water. There's a very old joke in astronomy that if you put Saturn in a bathtub, it would float, but it would leave a ring. The most striking discovery emerges from the data nine years after Voyager's flybys, a bizarre cloud formation at the North Pole. A giant hexagon over the North Pole with sides 9,000 miles long and it's 18,000 miles across. Yeah, that's bizarre. You don't often think about very stable geometric shapes like a hexagon that feels like it shouldn't happen, right? You don't get hexagon-shaped clouds on the Earth. Finally, in 2020, a team solves the mystery. Many cyclones surround a large jet stream at the planet's North Pole. Where the two weather systems meet, a hexagon cloud forms. Something we don't see here on Earth. The trouble with Earth is it has a lot going on. We have oceans, we have mountains. Uh, all of that disrupts the atmosphere. On Saturn, there isn't any of that. So you're able to have these very stable air flows that just wouldn't be possible on the Earth. <laughs> Nature's pretty wonderful. Next, the Voyagers turned their gaze to Saturn's rings. Their images are game changers. We thought that Saturn had just a handful of wide, flat rings. Voyager's images reveal thousands of separate rings orbiting the planet. But there's an even bigger surprise, an impossible ring. When the F ring of Saturn close-up image appeared on the screen, and instead of being sort of a single ring, it looked like multiple rings that were braided together. And one of the things that was discovered was two satellites that orbit inside and outside of the F ring, Prometheus and Pandora. When you have two little moons sort of co-orbiting with the ring, uh, there's a complex gravitational dance that happens with the inner moon wanting to speed up particles, the outer moon wanting to slow them down, and that interesting gravitational dance is what actually helps confine the ring into the narrow structure that we actually see. 1986, boosted by a slingshot from Saturn, Voyager 2 arrives at Uranus. After nine years in space, the probe is now in uncharted territory. We did know a couple things. Uranus has rings and sits on its side. Unlike most of the other planets whose spin axes are oriented more or less perpendicular to their orbital plane, uh, Uranus is tipped over on its side. It, it rolls around the sun like a barrel at times. There are other times where the sun is shining right down the equator. It's very unusual. In a flyby lasting just five and a half hours, Voyager 2 discovers 11 new moons and two more ghostly rings circling Uranus. But Voyager 2's strangest discovery is the planet's freakish magnetic field. On Earth, that bar magnet lines up close to our planet's spin axis. The Voyager probes found the same at Saturn and Jupiter. But Uranus's magnetosphere is different. The north and south axis of the magnetic field is tilted by almost 60 degrees relative to the spin axis of Uranus. That's strange. If you imagine transforming the Earth's magnetic field to be like the Uranus one, you'd have the magnetic north pole down near Miami someplace. It's, it's, it's way out there in left field. For now, Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft to ever visit. And what awaits the probe next could be Voyager's greatest discovery yet. 1989, Voyager 2 makes one last flyby. Neptune is the final stop on the planet hopping tour of the outer solar system. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to study the blue ice giant up close. We had these hints from our ground-based telescope that there was activity in the atmosphere. What its nature was, 
Uh, what was it like? There absolutely was nothing we had to prepare us for what we were going to see. Voyager 2 spots four new rings and six more moons. It detects hydrogen, helium, and methane in Neptune's atmosphere. And it records the fastest winds in the solar system, pushing white clouds across the planet at up to 1,500 miles an hour. And at their center, a colossal dark storm. While Voyager 2 leaves the planets behind, its twin, Voyager 1, heads to the edge of the solar system. But not before taking one last snapshot of home, a family portrait. This idea by Carl Sagan to take this family portrait is just magnificent. And the scientific need for it may have been limited, but the, the, the appeal to our sense of beauty staggering. This family portrait is a series of 60 images put together into a mosaic, and in it you can see the Sun and six planets, Venus, Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. As we were studying the images, we noticed along one of these sunbeams, there was the Earth, that pale blue dot, which contains every single person. We realized just how tiny our planet is and how very special. February 1990, the cameras power down for the last time. But this mission isn't over. The Voyager probes are about to reach the edge of the solar system, a region no spacecraft has been to before. In 2012, the probe becomes humankind's first object to leave the solar system, followed in 2018 by Voyager 2. It's been 50 years since the first satellites poked their way out of the Earth's atmosphere. And now the, both Voyager spacecraft have poked their heads out of the sun's atmosphere, are outside the solar system and exploring the galaxy. The Voyagers cross the final frontier and sail the ocean between the stars. They don't see their first discovery, they hear it. This is the sound of interstellar space. Poetically, I kind of like to think of it as the song the galaxy is singing, welcoming Voyager to interstellar space. Some of these sounds may even come from distant supernovas. Think about that, a star dying tens of thousands of light years away. And here's an echo of it here. The sounds of deep space tell us more about our part of the galaxy. Built to last five years, Voyager 1 and 2 are now more than 40 years old. Only one final mission remains, perhaps the most important mission, to let the rest of the galaxy know we're here. Strapped to each Voyager is an aluminum case. On the outer side is a map of how to find Earth with directions from different pulsars. Yeah, the, the golden disks are literally disks. They actually are records with grooves. You can play them, you can jam out to them. It's got a soundtrack of our species. The records have tracks by Beethoven, Blind Willie Nelson, and Chuck Berry. The sound of surf, of thunder, of birdsong, and a human heartbeat. So, will aliens ever find the records and give them a spin? It's possible that they will find it millions or even billions of years in the future, long after we're gone, where there really aren't humans anymore. Or is there even a possibility that when we start traveling to the stars in the far future, we'll find them? Awaiting discovery, or doomed to drift alone, the Voyager probes have already inspired one civilization, ours.